Hello everybody, this is Kimberly with Starfish Design and Bordeaux Group. Here to introduce you to the new jelly pouch. Oh, this has been an ordeal for me this week. So, um, these new printed vinyls are all the rage right now. They're clear, but they're printed. So, I thought, oh, I'm going to make a bag. Just a short series um, to be able to use these this new clear vinyl. Um, this particular one is from Backstitch. Um, vinyl, backstitch prints, as this, this one, this is cotton actually. Um, so there's four sizes and they will work, the same pattern will work with either, um, unlined vinyl or lined cotton. Same pattern. Literally the same file. The instructions will show you when to add the lining for the lined panel. So, and there's two different bag shapes. This one is a curved bottom. And then, of course, here's the square. This is the regular one. So, the problem I ran into is this is called TPU vinyl. I'm not going to look it up. Thermoplastic something or another. Um, but... My machine did not like it at all. So what happened was I got all this looping underneath. You see here, this is the My Punk embroidery Vinyl, the regular neon, no looping. It's stitched beautifully, right? But looping. And in fact, it wasn't even capturing the, um, the bobbin. Sorry, I had a brain freeze there. But funny enough, because it's a triple stitch, it ended up creating a chain stitch indirectly. So the construction is sound, but the inside looks a mess. So I'm like, okay, what am I gonna do? I bought all this vinyl from them. I need to be able to use it. So I went around and tried a thousand different things. So in the process of that, I created a test file. So if you have not bought this pattern and you're just looking at the video go to my group starfish design embroidery group on facebook go to the files and you'll find this test file so this was my most recent test file um and some of this vinyl is other makers vinyl but this is the tpu so this is the front so i tried um adding some of this uh jelly vinyl because that worked for somebody else Nope. So if you look at to the back, it's a mess. So actually every single test was a fail except the very last one. So this one here, um, uh, I don't remember what I did different on the top part here, but this was the only one that was successful. And so what I did is I wrapped the vinyl with a uh, cotton. This is actually just a single layer, but a cotton and for whatever reason, see that last line? Oh, I remember now. Sorry. This was the regular tension on my machine. This, I increased the tension to five. So on the Janome 500, which I use, at the system configuration settings, there's something called auto tension. Adjusting that had no difference whatsoever. When you open your stitch file, You'll see over here, there's a, uh, the icons on the right-hand side. One looks like a little right square triangle. If you click that, you can go in and adjust the tension. I My first test, I did five, but I wanted to see if it would work with lower. So this is actually four. So that's how I got the good stitch on here, is I increased the tension to four and wrapped it in cotton. So again, this is the TPU vinyl. I will show you with these other vinyls that I've tested with. Um, for example, this one is from Fairy Tale Prints, which those of you who are familiar with Bows and Clothes, it's her daughter, Morgan. She started this business and it's stitched fine. You can see underneath, it's stitched fine. So this is a PVC vinyl. Uh, this is a PVC vinyl from uh, same Fairy Tale Prints. It had no issues. Um, this is from uh, Purple Dragon, and it's just a regular vinyl, and it had no issues. So, um, this was my final test 
on the bags and I didn't even it out because I was just testing it and you see it stitched perfectly. So what I did for you guys, this doesn't look very good, right? It's the, the stitches are here and you have too much looseness here. So what I did is this pattern. So there's a separate, separate set of files um, called TPU. They have an underscore TPU on them. And that is meant to use with bias binding or if you, where is the other one I did? My test sample where I used this one. I used the neon vinyl from my punk broidery with my regular tension. It wasn't perfect, but it was acceptable to me. If I had increased the tension, it probably would have been perfect. So that's with the neon vinyl. And you see here with the double layer, I, I didn't even increase the tension here. And I just had the double layer of fabric. It was a little bit nicer. Um, but yeah, so this, the normal um, top stitch is this close together. So normally this is a stitch and flip. You stitch it, which is this one. This is your construction stitch. It gets hidden. Then you flip it down and do the top stitch. And this is a 3.0 millimeter bean. Um, I need a little bit smaller stitch to be strong enough. But I did make both of this the construction and the uh, top stitch the same. So if you prefer, you can actually take, oh, do I not have a sample right here to show you? You can actually take and butt your vinyl right up to the zipper. Let me do it on the green part so you can see better. You can butt your vinyl right up to the zipper and run those two stitches and not do the stitch and fold. If you think your bag, your pattern won't, or your machine can't handle it. Also, for the online bags, you can stitch right up to the zipper on any other vinyl except TPU. And instead of turning the bag inside out, you can just put, when you get to the step where you put the back on, you put it right side facing down on top of the hoop. If you instead put it right side facing out on the bottom of the hoop, so it will be like this, your right side is facing up like this, you'll have a flat bag that you don't have to turn and you can either live the edges raw or you can wrap the edges with um, like some, I bought the wrong size. I want a half inch finish, but this is fold over elastic. So you can wrap, wrap those raw edges all around and sew it on a sewing machine. And so you would just wrap this around your raw vinyl edge like this and then sew it all around. And then you'll have a flat bag that you don't have to turn. And it might be a good option for those of you who have arthritis or something like that. I did not demonstrate that version or put that, I just, just explained it in the PDF, um, but that's just another option. By doing the turn bag, you get some extra volume in there. And so the vinyl doesn't stick to each other as much. Okay, so what else? Um, this is a fabric vinyl combination. So I interfaced this with So Fuse Plus, and then it's got the cotton lining. Of course, it's, uh, you know, you just glue based or sew that closed. They're all the flat front zipper. Um, so there's four sizes, um, four by, five by four, six by five, seven by six, and eight by seven. So they're meant to just be, they're not meant to be cross body bags. They're small bags. This, you could throw a whole bunch of change and bills in there for your kid for their lunch pail um some of them i just added a tab on and not a d-ring strap connector um some of them i just added one of these pretty little back decorative bag tags i get from mormino um did i add a d-ring strap to any of these i thought i did i did but i don't have that one here i don't know where that one went okay so you see i did a lot of testing here this is actually probably the first bag I've done in a long time that I've ended up testing everything myself. So um, let me see which all ones. You'll see that um, this was actually my first curved. It wasn't curved enough for my liking. So the final curve is this. And then this is the jelly vinyl. Now I, I got this on Amazon because I was in a time crunch. But just to show you, it stitched fine. No issues with the jelly vinyl. And it looks like this. I got five sheets. I don't remember how much. 
and there actually is kind of a right and a wrong. You can kind of feel a difference. I don't know if it really matters, excuse me, in the long run. Um, but so you'll see here, this, this is stitch and flip method. So we stitched it down, then we flipped it, and then we top stitch it. So there's a placement on both sides. So if you want, you can put uh, a cute tab over here. And this tab just makes it easier to kind of open. And you can put a split ring through that. Um, but a, again, you can put a lobster clasp or a D ring or anything like that in here. So again, this is called the jelly pouch. So you'll have eight files in total for the square bottom or the rounded bottom. The same file, you'll load the same file whether you're doing the online version or the lined version. So with the online version and the lined version, we do the final stitch around for the exterior combined, and then we'll do another little stitch that's partial right here that will be where you normally turn it. And then if you're doing the lined version, you put the backing on and then do the final step. So this benefits us by doing on the raw edge online bags, sometimes you can see a little bit here, but sometimes you can see the thread stitches in the seams on vinyl bags. By stitching that second layer of stitching going around, it kind of takes the pressure off that seam and you don't see the threads as much. Um, but it is slightly offset so that we don't perforate the vinyl. But again, there could be some vinyls that cannot handle all the stitching. So that's why you have your test swatch. Run your test swatch with the materials you're gonna use cut off some little one inch or two inch strips and test it and make sure it's not gonna perforate. I do have another vinyl yet to test. This is from um, Sweet Tea Stitches, I think it's called. It feels a lot stiffer, but it is PVC, I checked with her. Um, but I feel like it's a heavier gauge than this one from um, uh, Fairy Tale Stitches or it's prints. Now, I talked to Adrian, Morgan's mom, they are gonna be ordering the TPU. So you might wanna check if you're gonna order some clear vinyl from somebody and make sure if it's the TPU or not, because if it is a TPU and you don't wanna hassle with it. I can tell you I've done previous bags using the clear colored vinyl from My Punk Broidery and also from So Hungry Hippie. She has some, um, I don't know that it's, considered printed or what, but she has some clear vinyl that is glittered and has some little stars on it. I've used that and I haven't had any issue. So I'm gonna assume it's PVC. Again, your machine may not have any issues with the TPU. I can only speak from my experience, use my Janome and I did have another tester and I think she was on a brother and she had the same situation, all the looping on the back. And um, so here's the, I didn't do the bag stitch out with the so, s -s Sweet Tea stitches, but this is my sample and it passed the test. The back side is clean. And these loops here at the beginning and end is just because I didn't pull up the tail that happens at the beginning and the end of a stitch when it's doing the back stitching. So anyway, so hers did pass my swatch test. Um, I just didn't do a bag with it. It feels like it might be a little harder to turn. Okay, so the final word. I turned every single one of these bags with my hands. I wanted to make sure I could do that because not everybody has a hair dryer or something, some other means. Um, and I was able to, even this little Mickey Mouse, I was able to turn it without blow drying it. But what you can do is use a blow dryer and um, that'll heat up the plastic and it'll be easier to turn. I lied, I have one more final, final thing to say. I'm sorry. Okay, so what I did on this file, I, I purposely stitched it this way, I didn't mess up. A number three and a number five zipper are wider. The zipper teeth are different on them, right? So here we have the five millimeter number five zipper and the three millimeter number three zipper. And you can see, let me show you on a bag that is a regular. Oh, that's number three. Do I not have one that I use number five? Yes, this is number five. 
there's a, a this is called a reveal how much zipper tape you actually see in the bag so the way i have this position this is how much reveal you see with the number five zipper but you can see if you look at the number three zipper right here you see just a tinge more like a 1 16th inch more on the three zipper this is just how i solved the issue of not having to create and charge you for more files for a number three or a number five zipper so you use the same file regardless of what size zipper you use one will just have a little bit more of a zipper tape showing. The number three will show more zipper tape. So to handle that with this bag, because I did not, I was exhausted. I've spent probably 40 hours on this. This was supposed to be a quick hit. So what I did on this one, if you see, this is the number five zipper. I offset this by about a 1 16th of an inch. And I laid this down here. And you can see the top stitch or the first stitch just barely caught it. But on a number three zipper, if you do that, it's going to it's gonna catch more because you're going to be offsetting it up to here. So that stitch is going to, this is the first stitch. This is the first stitch. It's the same as this first stitch. I didn't move this stitch at all. I only moved this stitch. So you can see here, if you offset this by 1 16th, where's my ruler at? On the number three, it's going to come... And I only have a one eighth marking. You can actually even do one eighth, but you can see how where that top stitch is going to show. It's going to cover the more than it did over here because this zipper is different. So this is what it looks like on the number five if you butt it right up to the zipper. So what I'm saying is, if you're using a number five zipper tape, I would butt your bias binding right up to the zipper teeth. It does not affect the zipper at all. And if you're using a number three zipper, then I would go ahead and leave that one eighth inch difference so that um, the stitch will show like this. Because if you butt the number three zipper up, you butt the bias tape up here on the number three zipper, you might not catch this last stitch may not catch it. You want the goal to have it look more even like this. So I try to explain that in the PDF, but it's kind of hard. So your PDF will have the instructions for the online bag, and then there's a jump section to jump down to what to do if you're using the bias binding, or you could use like the fold over elastic. And what I did do, of course I don't have any bias binding left to show you because I trimmed it at a different location. So what I did, let's just use this fold over elastic to show you. What I did is, and it's in the PDF, so you'll see it. What I did is um, I stitched, I put the bias binding down first, the folded edge against the zipper. I opened it up, and um, so I stitched down this first, the folded edge next to the zipper. Then I opened it up and slid the... So imagine this is your bias binding. It's folded in half. It's up against the zip, zipper or offset for the number three. I stitched the first the first line like that so it catches this. And then I opened it up and laid the vinyl on top of the stitch, butted up against the stitching, and then folded it back down. And then I used my stiletto to hold it in place as I stitched it because the tape that I use, the 3M transport tape, does leave residue on this type, this vinyl. Anyway, it's in the PDF, you'll see that. But that's how I handled that. I'm sorry, this was a much longer introduction than I intended. I am so sorry about that, but there was just so much to talk about. Um, and I want you prepared for this because the worst case situation is you buy this file and you test, you know, you start stitching away and all of a sudden you have all this looping and it looks horrible. And you've wasted money because this vinyl, I don't know about the other vendors TPU, but this costs $25 a roll. That's a lot of money for vinyl. And that doesn't include shipping. You have to pay shipping on top of that. So I only got two rolls. I got this kind here and this kind, these two. So it's expensive vinyl um, to be wasting. So that's why go ahead and get your little test strip out. Cut a whole bunch of one inch or two inch strips and do this test because 
the worst case scenario is you don't and it's a mess and again let me show you the messy stitching and I mean at the end of the day somebody's probably not going to notice it because they're going to go like this but you can see it and if you're trying to sell at an upscale boutique or something like that or uh, uh, upscale craft you don't want to be selling something like that that doesn't look good so at the end of the day you want to have very nice stitching that uh, looks nice when somebody opens up the bag okay so that is it guys and again what? you can line them or whatever the line bags where's the two line bags i did these are lined and then the opening is right here and i just use glue to close mine and fun little bags you can use them for who knows what <laughs> so um this is the largest one and let's see what does it end up finishing to be uh, about seven by six and a half. So give or take. Okay, so let's get to this. We are going to be stitching out in this video this sample right here. And you will see all the looping <laughs> as we go along. Um, I didn't want to do another video. So you will see this as we go along. This is the sample we're going to be doing. And it looks really good if you back it with a, a different vinyl. But I wanted to try some with backing it with the same vinyl. But this is definitely a more affordable way to go. Because this vinyl is either $8 or $10 a yard from or a roll from my punk embroidery. And so you get the benefit of having the cute clear vinyl on the front. But if you're trying to make a little bag that you're going to carry to... Um, uh, a stadium or something like that. You might need something that's totally see-through. I did not put D-ring strap connector straps at the top because that wasn't the intent of this bag. But you can measure and put those in before the last couple of stitches if you want. You're just going to get the side connector straps. Okay, guys, let's get started. Go ahead and get your, since we're doing the online one, we can use Tearaway. Um, for the lined bags, I still recommend using the poly mesh, uh, no show poly mesh, but the tearaway will be able to tear it all away so you don't see it. So go ahead and get your tearaway and run your color stop one and get all your supplies together and we'll get started on this. Okay, let's get started on this bag. So I'm going to head and run color stop one, which is just the general outline of the bag and the zipper placement line on the stabilizer. Um, oh, Okay, let's get started. I've gone ahead and I've run color step one on the stabilizer only. Since I'm doing the online bag, I am using the uh, medium weight tear away. Um, always make sure you do a, a trace with your design to make sure it's gonna fit inside your hoop. Um, and then let's get our materials together here. So I have this neon vinyl that's gonna be for the back and I've cut things probably a little graciously, but better safe than sorry. Then I have this um, see-through from Backstitch that's gonna be the bottom panel. This is for the top panel. And then I'm gonna use a, a D-ring strap connector. Um, since this is a larger bag, this is the eight by seven bag. And I'm using my 7.9 by 7.9 hoop from my Janome 500 slash 550E. Um, what I wanna show you though is just to give some extra reinforcement to the D-ring strap connectors tab, I always put a strip of either Decoville Light, or in this case, I'm using Sofuse Plus because I had an extra scrap sitting there. And you won't really see it once the bag is assembled, but just gives a little bit extra strength to that point because it's a inflection point in the bag. I've got my zipper, and I'm using a number five zipper today. The pattern will work, work with number three or number five. I have my tape that I'm gonna to need to tape everything down. I have my pointing device. This is an Alex Anderson four in one. I love this thing, not a sponsor. A friend sent it to me um, as a surprise and I loved it so much I bought another one for my um, sewing machine. So it has this flat iron edge, which is good for rolling seams. This rounded edge is good for getting corners out of your bags. And then on inside you have a stiletto on one end and 
a seam ripper on the other. I love this thing. Absolutely love it. Okay, and what else? We're going to need a lighter to fray the zipper edges when we're done because the zipper is going to be exposed in this bag. So it might get a little bit more wear than you would normally get um, on other bags. And then I have a marking pen. And I'll show you what that's for in just a second. And then a small ruler. And then I have fabric Hack. Again, I'm not a sponsored by them, just a happy customer. And over here to the side, I have some clips. Oh, we actually don't need this today. We're doing an online bag, so we don't need the fabric tack. We don't need the clips. But I do have some machine oil here. The reason I have that is because I noticed that when I did the first sample, so this is the first one I probably already showed you in the intro, um, but I wanted to show you the underside. The underside was very messy. So this is a um, stitch and flip method. So you stitch it wrong side to this tape and then fold it and then top stitch it. So this needle was per penetrating through two layers of this uh, I think it's called TPU vinyl. It didn't like it. So whenever you see an issue on the bottom of your work, that means there's an issue with the top. So as a result, it was too much stress coming through there. My bobbin th or the, it's not the bobbin thread. It pulled the top thread under and made it really kind of messy looking. I just took my lighter and kind of wiped it over that a few times to melt it. Um, so it's solid. I mean, you're not really going to see it too much when you're working with the bag, but what I'm going to try and do this time, I did order some, they now have Teflon embroidery needles. So I've ordered a sample pack, but I'm waiting for them to come. So in the interim, what I'm going to do when we get to that step is I'm just going to take my regular machine oil and I'm going to run it along the edge here and see if it gives some better effect and gives a little bit more structure for that needle. I'm gonna double check that my needle's not sticky, it's not. So, that's what I'm gonna try. So that's all our materials, and I have my D-ring. I'm also gonna put a little tag on the other side of the bag, just for fun. And let's see. So the ruler and the pen we need. Um, I'm pretty good at eyeballing it, but in case you're not, and notice my thread came on done right here. It's okay because we're doing the number five zipper, so we're going to use the middle line anyway, but if that were you, I would go ahead and just rerun that line or use a pen and mark it. So what you can do is I have these little tick marks to mark the center of your bag. So line them up. Make sure you have your seam line on one of your marks on your ruler, and then line them up, and then just kind of draw a line so you can see it from the reverse too. I added this just to help you um, line up your material. Um, I'm pretty good at eyeballing it, like I said, and this is a, not a huge bag, but you might have, um, like I'm using this here vinyl. Let's say for example, I wanted to make sure this motif was right in the center front. I would go ahead and fold my vinyl in half and mark it right here and then line that up with my tick mark so I can make sure it's centered. I'm not worried about this on this one, it's too wild, but on other vinyls or materials, that might be important. So that's why I provide this. I don't do this on every bag. I try to remember because it's so helpful, but I don't always remember. So applaud me for doing it this time. So first thing we're gonna do is our zipper. Um, we're gonna do a zipper tack down. So as I mentioned, I'm using a number five zipper. So when you're using a number five zipper, um, all my patterns from 2020 on will work with either a number three or a number five zipper, unless it's indicated otherwise on the pattern. And of course, I don't have, here we go, here's number three zipper. So the difference between the number three and the number five, and uh, fast forward through this, if you guys already know this because you watched my other videos, is the number five zipper tape, the, the millimeter of the actual teeth is five millimeters, that's the first part. The second part is usually it's one and a quarter inches wide. I've had some that are wider and more narrow. A number three, the teeth are three millimeters across 
and generally as always the zipper tape is one inch across again i've had some that's seven eighths inch i've had some that's one and a sixteenth inch and here i actually have this one sitting here um handy that i can show you this is number five it's sold as number five but look at that it's lined up on this side it's not a hot one and a quarter inches wide it's one and uh, what would that be? Five sixteenths. It's about a sixteenth of an inch wider. So if if I were to draw lines for you to center a number five zipper, it wouldn't work because every vendor is different. Um, this vendor is. Let's see. Is this one that's a more narrow one? Yes. This vendor tape. It may be the same vendor actually as this one. I can't remember. But see how that one which actually has resin teeth, which I'm not a big fan of. This one is resin. These are polyester or nylon. But you see how that one is actually a 16th of an inch more narrow. So they're all varied. But by and far, a number three, I don't see much variance in the number three zipper tape. It's usually always one inch wide. So by and far, you're going to be okay with that. Okay. And I feel like I'm talking a mile a minute. Sorry about that. Let me see if I can wind myself down a little bit today. So with the number three zipper tape, you're gonna notice there's three zipper placement lines. This is the top of our bag. This is a front zipper bag, meaning the zipper is on the front as opposed to a top zipper bag where the zipper's on the top. So you have three lines here, one, two, three. With the number three zipper, you're gonna center the zipper, zipper between these two outer lines like this and then you're going to do that all the way down and tape it down with the number five zipper tape which we're using today if you look at the back of your zipper tape you're going to see there's a, a line it's a negative line and it's the opening that is formed when you um, open the zipper but you can actually see that it's a line so this is the direct middle of the zipper tape so we're going to line up this line, and if you can't see it easily, um, some zipper tape, it's harder to see. Use a marker and mark it because it's going to be on the bottom of the bag. You're not going to notice that. So go ahead and mar line this up with the center line all the way down the bag. And regardless of what size you're using, I like to anchor it, um, the zipper, on what is the right hand side of the bag and I'm always going to be talking about right or left in regard to the bag itself not the hoop so what I like to do is I turn it so that I'm looking at the right side I'm facing it and then I kind of fold this up and I'm just going to overlap a little bit outside not too much about a quarter to a half an inch and then I got that lined up on that that oops I went too far on that actual line and then I'm going to tape it down so I'm going to do that. And I find this just helps. So you're basically anchoring that so that it doesn't move around when you do the rest of it. And then I just take like one and a half inch pieces of tape and I kind of just unfold or roll the zipper across the hoop and I hold it taut and tape on the bottom. I try to get as close to the edge as possible about every couple of inches. I always do the bottom first and then just put a couple pieces on the top because if you make sure this is centered and you're taping it down on the bottom, then your top is for sure going to be centered and you don't have to worry about relooking at it and repositioning it. So that's all I do and I go all the way down and then I try to make sure my zipper pole is out of the way. Oops, I might have got a little bit too, I didn't cut the uh, zipper long enough so this is why I always try to recommend cutting the zipper at least two inches wider so now this is going to be bugging me so I don't want to pull it to pull off so I'm going to go ahead and tape that pull down so it doesn't jangle around and hit our needle when we're coming around and now that that's done I can come back around here and you see my tape has a little bit of wrinkle to it but I haven't found that to be a major issue like it can't be in a sewing bag because we are holding this down as we stitch it down. But you can take it to the iron and try and get those wrinkles out. I just don't have a lot of luck with this kind of thread. Okay, 
So this is what it looks like now. And so now we're facing our design. Everything is taped down. We're going to run color stop two, which is just going to tack this to the stabilizer so we can get rid of the tape. And I'll be right back. Okay, so take the time now to kind of turn your hoop and eyeball the stitch out. You see the line here? And make sure it looks relatively even on both sides because if you got your zipper um, wonky in any way, then the amount of zipper tape that shows in the reveal later will not be even. Um, and that's important on, on this style of bag. So again, we're working on the online bag here. I'm not doing a separate video for the lined bag because it's no different than any of the other um, patterns that I've done like that. So I there should be a link in the PDF to a lined version of this style of bag. One thing that's really important when you are going along with an online bag is to trim all these threads that you get underneath or um, the tails because those will show in your bag later. Now, I'm gonna show you something. This is not my preferred method of doing bags with vinyl, but many machines might have a struggle going over that thickness of vinyl when you do the stitch and flip. I don't always do this. Generally, when I make a bag, I do the construction seam, which is the first seam when you stitch the vinyl down at 2.5 millimeters because it's a smaller stitch length, so it's stronger. And then I do the top stitch at 3.5 or four millimeters because especially with vinyl, it looks nicer. But because this is an online bag and I know people are gonna do this, I make both the construction and top stitch 3.0 millimeter so they match. So if you want the bag is digitized that you can do it this way where you lay the vinyl up against the zipper teeth or just slightly you know inside of the zipper teeth both both of them and then when you'll do the two st steps the one is the tack down and one is top stitch you'll have two lines of stitching those that line of stitching will be the same size and it'll look okay the reason i did that is because i noticed people do that with my other bags they don't want to do the stitch and flip with the vinyl and the, the seams aren't even then. And I, that's fine, but it's not the way I'm the digitizer. It's not the way I designed it. So for this one, I did design it that way. So if you want to do that, if you don't want to worry about your machine trying to go through two layers of this clear vinyl or even the top vinyl, then go ahead and just kind of, what I would do is I would leave about a 16th of an inch between the edge of this and the zipper teeth so that you don't, risk um infringing on the movement of the zipper pull so can you see that get a ruler if you have to but just about a 16th of an inch and then just tape it down um all around and then you'll just leave it like this for the next two color stops i'm not going to do that though because i want to test my oil solution here and i it's not my preferred way i like the look I think it adds more integrity to the bag and you see more of the zipper. Okay, so we're gonna face this down. Again, fold it and mark the center if you have to meet up your center. If it's directional like this is, you want to lay it so that the direction is in the right order and then just flip it up. And then when you're done, it'll be in the right direction. So we're gonna go ahead and make sure this doesn't go beyond the zipper. So line it up with the bottom edge of the zipper. And you can do that on both the number three or the number five zipper. The number three zipper will just have a shorter seam allowance than the number five. And then I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I put a piece here in the center as well because this vinyl wants to slip around. And then put a piece down here. Now I'm using transport tape by 3M. And my experience, it, the needle can go through the tape and it's okay a number of times. Um, if it does start to gummy up your needle, you can just use some rubbing alcohol. Now, like I said, I'm not sure if it's gonna have issues with this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put a tiny drop of machine oil. Uh-oh, my little dropper thing is stuck. 
Let me see if I can get it out. I'm just gonna put a tiny little drop. Like that. And I'm gonna rub that along this bottom half inch or so. And see if that helps with the needle going through it and not getting that extra on the bottom. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and run color stop three. And I'll just leave the machine on for this one um, just because it's a fast stitch. All right. Be right back okay sorry about that guys i thought about editing it out but this is real embroidery world so if i don't show you mistakes i can't show you tips and tricks on how to resolve them so did not like that the oil did not help and my thread got all gobbledygook again so i had to pull all that out i pulled my um, vinyl down a little bit because i don't want to go through those same holes and what I did now is, so my second thought is, maybe it's a needle. So I've moved up to a 100 needle, and let's see how that does. And that took longer than I wanted to pull it out because it was a bean stitch. So we're gonna try a 100 needle now. Let's see if that works better. I'm gonna go ahead and stop and pull this long tail thread out because I don't want that to get all hung up in there, okay? So let's pull that out. So this vinyl is a little dense. Um, I think one of the things that we don't think about often Oh, this is really good. I can show you two things. Now I'm going to have to pull this out again. One of the things we don't think about is how dense the material is we're working with. So it's not just a matter of how thick it is, but how dense it is. And I have noticed over time working with some of those vinyls that have like the flannel backing. They almost feel like tablecloth material. They do not do well with our embroidery machines. Now, look what happened. Can you see underneath there? Look how close my stitch is to that zipper teeth. It's not supposed to be. So somehow, when that thread got all hung up, it threw my machine out of alignment, and now it's not lined up right. So I'm going to go ahead and do this offline, but it's important that I show you this. I'm going to have to go through this again. I'm going to pull these stitches out because if I leave it like that, then when I fold it down, it's not going to look good. Um, and then I'm going to restart my design because if that is off, See how it's really close to the zipper teeth right here, but it's not over here. If that is off, then my whole design will be off. Now on the back, it's still, there's still some areas of messiness, but it's a lot nicer with the larger needle. So I will be right back with you. Okay, um, I actually changed my mind. I did restart my design, but I'm not gonna pick out these stitches. I'm just gonna live with it because um, it's going to damage my vinyl and I don't know if you guys know backstitch, but this stuff is expensive. So I'm just going to live with it. So what I'm going to do now is pull the tape off and I'm going to try that little oil trick again on the top. So if you get into your stitches, like right here, just hold your stitches down and pull the tape the opposite direction. All right. And so then what we're going to do is fold this down. And always keep it at a, against a firm space, firm desk or whatever. And then go ahead and rub it and then tape the sides down. But using a boning tool is really helpful for this. You can get those from the scrapbooking aisle. Um, but it's really, I have one, but I'm in between uh, storage area things right now. Because I'm trying eventually to get the stuff reused. Design or re 
I can't speak today. Reorganized over here. So I'm just gonna try and tape these down along the edge. And then I'm gonna try and do that with the oil again. And I feel like I'm gonna run into the same issue that it's not gonna like going through this thickness. So um, if that's the case, I'm just gonna live with it. And I'm gonna do the same thing I did on the other one. I'm gonna put, uh, burn the edges of it, and then I'm gonna put some uh, glue behind it and let it dry. Okay, so this I'm gonna run, we're up to step um, four now. So I'm gonna run four and I'll be right back. So that didn't help, it's still pulling the thread up. So I did re-thread my machine, just if you guys wondered about that. So there's just something about this particular vinyl that the machine, I do have those Teflon needles, but you see the stitches are pretty secure. So all I'm gonna do is take my lighter and just kind of rub it quickly along here and it'll help melt those and it'll just make it kind of look like a ribbon and it, the stitches are secure. And then just put some glue on it if you're worried about it coming out. But if you look at the front, it's nice and holding it down securely. So the oil didn't really help much. So I'm gonna use, um, oops, I almost put oil on it. I'm gonna use some scrap cotton here and wipe the oil off. And I'll show you after we do the, the neon vinyl and you'll be able to see the difference. Oh, I'm gonna wait and put the glue on it when we're all done. I don't wanna do that right now. Just one moment. Next step, number five, is going to be for the D-ring placement um, or you know, on the smaller bags, um, let me try and get this little pull out of the way a little bit more. On the smaller bags, I actually just used um, the little tabs where they at. And so, cause they're small, so I don't really see you using this as a wristlet. So I just used that. So we're gonna run this step and it's gonna run the placement for those. I'm gonna keep an eye on that pull though, cause I don't want it to hit it. I'm gonna run it on both sides because I'm gonna put the D-ring strap connector down on one side and this little um, tab I have on the other side. Yeah, it really doesn't like this vinyl. <laughs> Did you hear that sound of the thread cutter? Didn't even like it. Okay, so let's wipe off this oil. Um, the alternative thing that you can try um, is to use some bubble uh, plastic wrap style WSS water soluble stabilizer on the top and bottom and that might also help but I'll be really curious when I get those Teflon needles I'm gonna do another test and see if they work better I wish I could show you the feel of this vinyl so you could understand how it's so much denser. And this is the TPU. The, I saw some comments, the PUL style is supposed to be even worse. Unless I accidentally ordered the PUL. I need to double check that. That could be part of my issue. Okay, so first of all, where's my little strap connector and my D-ring? And um, I cut these so that you have a little bit extra material hanging over. When you cut your strap connectors, um, even with your bag seam allowance, you give no ability for movement in that juncture. And what will happen is if this is a seam here and you only have this tiny little bit of seam allowance in there, over time it's constantly getting pulled on and pulled on and that strap is gonna come right out of that seam. But if you overhang it like a half an inch, then over time as it's pulling, 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 there's a lot more give there and it's not gonna be as likely to come out of that seam. So you'll see when we trim this bag, um, we don't wanna trim this even. We wanna leave that extra half inch overhang. And then over here, this little, um, how did I just lose it again, guys? This little tag is going to hang over a little bit more. How did I just lose it? Oh, there it is. 
Okay, so it says, be the rainbow and the cold. So I think I'm gonna have the be the rainbow be on the top. So here's the little stitches right there. So I'm just gonna line this up with the top. Now this is, um, it's, you need to have the raw edges on the outside, Kimberly. This is uh, gonna be a little bit um, longer than that. So the, the tack down is not gonna cover it fully. And that just came undone. I'm gonna have to retape that. So, it, but it'll be, I'll hold enough and it'll get caught in the final seam. So yeah, I put that um, oil on and now nothing wants to stick to it. Let me get a bigger piece of tape. We don't want to put our fingers in here when we're working on this stuff. We want to keep it, our fingers away. That's why I like the um, stiletto tool thing because you can put this in and help guide stuff without risking your finger. Because I don't know if you have been to the hospital lately, but getting a needle surgically removed from your finger is pretty doggone expensive. All right, I'm gonna run step six and I'll be right back. So now those are both tacked down. And now we're ready to put on our top band. And just like we did before, we're gonna put the right side facing down, evenly taped with the top of the zipper. And if it's directional, the same thing applies. Put it in the right direction, like this, it's gonna be, and then just flip it down. I have a friend who's a travel agent. So she gets really excited well, I don't know if she gets really excited, but I get excited to share with her any of these kind of designs because I can't sell them um, because they're they're samples, right? So anyway, but she'll be excited to get this one. Okay, so I'm gonna run step seven and I'll be right back. I wanna show you the back. See how nice that stitch is? So it's not the, it's not the machine, it's not the thread, it's not the needle, it's the vinyl. The differences between how it's stitched out. But like I said, it's it's good enough. Um, you're not really gonna be looking at that part of the bag and it's structurally sound. So I'm not gonna worry about it, but I am gonna try those Teflon needles when they come and see if that helps. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and roll this up. And again, whenever we're finger pressing, we wanna make sure our, our hoop is against out of something firm. And then I'm gonna tape this down at the top and on the sides. And we are almost done. This is how fast these unlined ones go. Cause you don't have to do all that flapping back and forth on the back of the hoop to put the lining. Okay, that didn't like that. So let's put it up here. Okay, so now we're gonna run eight, which is the top stitching and I'll be right back. Here we are. So we have our top stitching done. And again, look at the back. The Stitching is neat and tidy. So I'm going to trim off these extras here. We're ready to do our um, two last steps. So I didn't I didn't mention this so much at the beginning. I didn't emphasize it, but this bag is the same steps for the unlined versus the lined. The difference is for the lined bag, you're going to flip it back and forth and put the lining on throughout all these steps. So what we're going to do is, this is going to be the main bag exterior. We're going to put down our exterior panel. We're going to tape it down really well because it's going to start at the bottom. One thing I wanted to show you is, this piece is 9 by 8 for the 8 by 7 bag. So what I did is I marked on here the width direction so I wouldn't get confused because it's hard to tell by looking at it. So um, just that's just a little tip you can do. So we're gonna put this face down and step nine is gonna stitch all the way around and then it's gonna do another, come a little bit, about a sixteenth of an inch from the main line and do a small stitch here. And then you'll run step 10, 
which will come all the way around. So that gives us two rows of stitching. My first test, you can see the stitches in the corner too much. So I wanna back that up and hopefully that'll help. I don't know if you've worked with vinyl a lot, it's a little trick you do with vinyl is you put an extra row of stitching just to the outside of the original seam in the seam allowance and it helps take the stress off that joint. So that's what we're gonna do um, here. In, if you were doing the line bag, that little step would just give reinforcement at the opening for the exterior. So that's why the pattern is the same, regardless of which version you're doing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure that I'm covering, I can see through here that original placement line and make sure that I'm overlapping that by you know a quarter of an inch to a half an inch. We're gonna trim this online bag to a half an inch, but if you were doing the line bag, you would trim it to um, a quarter inch at the opening. Now, because we're gonna stitch from bottom to up to top, normally I like to stitch from top to bottom because some vinyl has stretch in it. And if you stretch from the top to bottom, if you get any kind of puckers or whatever, those will be in the bottom of the bag and you can work them into the seam allowance and they won't be noticeable, or at least as noticeable as if they were at the top of the bag. But due to the way I'm designed this to be all one file, I'm starting from the bottom. This vinyl doesn't have any stretch, so I don't have to worry about it. I'm just taping here, it's fine. But if you were doing um, a vinyl that has stretch in it, you wanna tape all the way around really well so it doesn't pucker on you. Okay, so I'm gonna run step nine, and then I'm gonna run step 10. Those are the last two steps, we're not gonna run 11, and then I'll be right back. Woo, I'm glad I caught myself. Y'all, why didn't you yell through YouTube at me? what did I forget to do? We have to move, we have to open our zipper. <laughs> so, Sorry about that. Go ahead. It's time to open the zipper and pull your zipper pull over to about uh, three quarters. Tape it down so it doesn't come loose when you're stitching around. Okay, and then retape. Woo! That would have been really sad. Okay, now I'm ready to run steps nine and ten. I'll be right back. Okay, we're all done. So this is what it looks like on the front. And you see we have just a slightly more um, seam allowance on the outside. And then again on the back, ah, yikes, all this, that's okay. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna un remove all the tape. And then we're gonna trim this down all the way around. It's just a little bit easier to remove the tape while it's still in the hoop because there's some tension from the hoop. Is that it? Okay. So we're gonna carefully remove the stabilizer. And to be honest, I don't use uh, tearaway a lot. So this isn't my best uh, experience. Um, but usually what you want to do is you want to kind of hold the stitches and you kind of tear it against or away from the stitches. So you're supporting the stitches with your hand, your finger, and then you're pulling the stabilizer out. Or you can go like this and pull it against. But the, I, the point is you want to support the stitches with your hand. And that gives tension so the tear away comes off easier. Got a piece, a little piece of tape stuck on me. All right. And then you'll want to use your seam ripper um, to carefully remove the stabilizer behind the zipper. So what I like to do is I get my seam ripper, same as I do with my poly mesh. I want to be able to make sure I can see my blade under that stabilizer and they just kind of glide it along here, along the seam. And it'll help pull it out of the seam. 
one thing you need to realize when you're pulling this stabilizer away on this online bag, you're going to have the actual stabilizer stitches stuck in the, the stabilizer. I'm sorry, the actual placement stitches stuck in the stabilizer. So you might have to use your scissors and cut those stitches. If you don't, you might risk them being entwined in your actual construction stitches and then pulling it out. There's a little bit of overlap for each of these um, at every intersection, but it's still a possibility that you could, you know, pull it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this here. And then see right here is what I'm talking about. That's the um, construction, the placement stitching. I wanna cut that. And now I'm gonna go ahead and pull this down here. And I'm gonna do the same thing at the end here. I'm gonna cut that because I don't want that extra to pull out my stitches. I'm gonna go ahead and just cut off these pieces that are sitting, sitting upwards a little bit. Okay. I'm not giving up on this final, guys. I mean, it's still okay, but I'm just giving this to a friend. If I'm being honest, it's not something that I don't think I would wanna sell like that. So, Maybe your machine will handle this clear vinyl better than mine. I'm not sure. But I can't go higher than 100 needle. It would really not do good for the other vinyl. I mean, I could switch it back, but. So I will keep you guys posted. I'll probably put a comment down below when I get those Teflon needles and I'm gonna test those and see if that helps. And they are by Schmetz. You can get them on um, Amazon or some other vendors, but I just wanted to try test them. So I just wanted to get one container. So I actually found it on eBay. So I got just one container coming. It's a multi-pack with, they don't have 7511, which is what we usually use for embroidery. But um, I'm going to just try the 8012 and the 9014. Probably we'll have to do the 116 for this vinyl. And we'll see if that Teflon coating going through this helps. And you see here, I'm just trimming these placement stitches that are coming up as I go along. Okay. So now what we want to do is grab our lighter. And we're going to trim off these ends of our zipper first and then we're going to go ahead and so I'm just folding this back and then we're going to burn those because we don't want the zipper to come undone. So I'm trimming it about not quite a, qu a quarter inch but and then just take your lighter and rub it along here and melt that zipper and do that on both sides. Just fold the vinyl out of the way and this one, because I positioned it at that quarter inch when I first placed it on, it's already there. I'm just going to trim it a little bit. And then just burn it. Okay. And now I'm going to go ahead and gently take my lighter and pass it over this thread here and burn it a little bit. And then I'm going to put some glue over it and let that dry and then I'll just give it a little bit extra support in case it does try to come out on the other side but it's so thick the stitches are very solid I'm not too worried about it but that'll dry to set up strength while we're turning the bag So I'm using my Kai um, 7205. I'm gonna cut from this side so I can see better. So I'm just gonna trim one quarter inch all the way around and shave off these little 
ends because you never know where they might come in handy. Oh, let's make sure we don't cut into our, I almost did, I did a little bit, into our little um, tag. And then the same on the other side, we don't want to cut into our D-ring strap connector. So fold this back towards you out of the way so you can see. And then go ahead and finish trimming your corner. Oops, I'm gonna have to do that zipper again because it's a little bit more. Okay. And then flip it around and pull it to you this time and do your trimming. Like that. And now I'm gonna fold this down and hit that iron again or the zipper. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this side with the D-ring strap connector first so that I can keep sure, get, get it out of the way. So it's right here, so I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting my one quarter inch. And now when I get closer to it, I'm gonna pull it to me and hold it out of the way like that. And then go ahead and finish cutting your one quarter inch seam allowance. And then I'll flip it over and pull it to me again and hold it with my thumb and go ahead and finish cutting my seam allowance. And that way I don't cut into my tab. You can pull it a little bit more over here too. I don't wanna cut into my zipper again, but I wanna cut this just a little bit more here. So I always just fold these pieces out of the way that you don't wanna cut. So you don't accidentally cut it again. But you see that's a little bit too wide right there. So I need to trim it a little bit more. Okay, now at the corners, a lot of times what people do is they just chop off the corner. I find that I get the best results when I actually taper the corner. So what I do is I come in like this on this direction, and then at this direction I come in and I go like this. And I find that gives a better um, corner than when you just go like this. Don't cut into your stitching though. Okay, now this is important. On the bottom corners, to get the best results, when you go to turn this curve inside out, all this material has to find a home inside that bag and there's not enough room because it's gonna go and bunch up on itself. So what you do is you do these little notches and I take it about a one eighth inch away from the seam allowance. Um, if you're doing cotton, I try to stay closer to like 3 16 um, But with vinyl, vinyl's not fraying most of it, so you can go a little closer. So I just do these tiny little notches and that's gonna remove that material so that that seam can spread out inside the bag. So do it on both sides. I don't use pinking scissors because vinyl is really rough on scissors as it is, and I don't want to dull my pinking scissors, so I do it this way. You can use pinking scissors on cotton, though, but I just find you get a little bit better results when you do the notches versus the pinking scissors anyway, because they're deeper, you see. Okay, and now go ahead and push your zipper on tape it if you need to. Push it all the way open to the other side, like that. And then you can start turning it right side out. And I haven't figured out any which way that's easier than that. And look right here, I have a gobbledygook. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna kinda just run my lighter over it, melt those stitches together a little bit. I can assure you that my friend is probably not gonna be looking inside the bag at all the stitching. So just kind of work. If you have to get a blow dryer and blow dry the vinyl will help make it a little bit more flexible. Just kind of work it out. I'm 
and then the corners here too. And so by going around twice that we did, it also gives a little bit extra reinforcement to the zipper. Since it's exposed, if those stitches tear, your zipper pole could come off. So, you might to reinforce those. And you can already see inside how that seam is going to come together at the bottom. Yeah, this clear vinyl is much thicker and denser than... I mean, I don't feel like it's thicker. It's just dense all the way through. Whereas, see this... Let me show you real quick. Interrupt this moment. So this, see how thick that is? And see how thick this is? This is actually just a very thin vinyl with a thin knitting behind it. Whereas this is the whole vinyl all the way through. And I honestly don't know what other purpose they would use this material for except for like to make um, bags and it's probably used for like, you know, windows on tents and things like that so most mostly would be being used on an industrial machine and those machines can just pierce through anything like if you did this on my um, brother's six needle machine it would have gone through this without any issue at all um but this machine's not that powerful because it's a domestic machine and designed to be embroidering on t-shirts and Maybe jeans or something like that would be the most dense that it would be designed to stitch through. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm reaching in there and just kind of pushing out the seam. And this is where this piece of the tool comes in handy. Put my seam ripper. Is you can kind of rub it along that seam gently and push out the curve. You can still see the stitches a little bit. But I think that's more to do with the fact the vinyl and not the stitching, the clear vinyl. So I don't wanna push too hard because I don't wanna the stitches to show. So I'm just kind of rubbing it. But let me see if I can see, can you see inside how those stitches, those can lay and they spread out now? Whereas if we hadn't did that notching, that vinyl would have been pushed up against itself. Okay, now to get these corners out, I'm gonna push them out as far as I can with my finger. And this neon vinyl is actually kind of see-through, so if you hold it up to the light, you can kind of see. And then I'm gonna use this and come in here and gently push it out as much as I can get it. And then I like to rub the, the against the seam inside, run this along it and it'll help separate it. And then same thing over here. Okay. Oh, there we go. Let's get all of our mess out of the way here and zip up our bag. And then I have one more thing to show you. I'm not gonna demonstrate this. I'm just gonna show it to you um, as another option you can do with this bag. So go ahead and pull your thing closed and then you can weight this down with a book and that'll help um, to keep it flat because it's kind of puffy there we go that cute okay so the other thing you can do if you want a more uh, simple bag instead of doing the stitch and flip like I did and turning the bag inside out you can just put everything you put your um your vinyl 
your back right side facing up away from the stabilizer on that last step on the bottom of the hoop and then you leave this on the front and so then what you'll have is a raw edge all around is what I'm getting at. <clears throat> you can do that and leave it raw edge and then get some binding or this is um, FOE, uh, Flexible something, elastic. Oh, fold over, fold over, FOE, fold over elastic. And it's, but it's flexible. And so what you can do then is, and I'll see if maybe somebody will show demonstrate that. What you can do is fold this over and put it along the raw edge and cover it and then stitch this down at your machine. And this is actually too narrow. I intended to have half inch after it's folded over and I didn't read the instructions very well. This is only half inch. So it's only a quarter inch folded over. You would want something that is one inch wide so it folds over to half an inch. So what you would have, let me just show you on um, some scraps here. Okay, so you would have your, this is the back of your bag and this is the front of your bag like this and it'd be all stitched together here and then you would take your bias tape or your fold over elastic and fold it over the edge and stitch it closed. That's another alternative you can do with this bag. So again, if you want to do that, the final step when you put the backing on, you would put it on the bottom of the hoop with the wrong side against the stabilizer and then just run those last stitches and then just take some bias ribbon and cover all the way around the raw edges. Now I'm gonna to have to figure out what I'm gonna do with this fold of elastic I ordered. That's the wrong size. Oh my goodness. Kimberly, Kimberly, Kimberly. Don't do that. Okay, that's it guys. Um, I hope you like this new little, cute little series. It takes me way too long to explain it than it'll take you to stitch it out. And again, the same pattern will be for the uh, or unlined like this or the lined. Have a great day.